Right, so there's been a theme to this morning's service. Have you noticed that? It wasn't done it wasn't done on purpose. Right. It was completely random. Steve had no idea what I was preaching on till last night. Simon didn't really know, he knew roughly, but not really what I was gonna call it till last night. And yet he'd already got that song praise that we played, um, and a heart of worship that we sang. And and God has just brought this morning together and we've talked about praise and worship. So I'm gonna carry on that theme. And um, when I was falling to sleep the other night, God actually gave me this scripture, Psalm 148, about four weeks ago. And I've been thinking on it and thinking on it, and I knew it was my next sermon, um, but I didn't know what he wanted me to say about it. And um, the other night, I was falling to sleep, and you know when you're in a half-sleep, half-awake stage, God said to me, the title of the thing was, Created to Praise, Alive to Worship. Although I'm not sure if it was Alive to Worship or Living to Worship, but the idea, same, same, right? So let's turn to Psalm 148 and let's read it together. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him from the skies. Praise him, all your angels. Praise him, all the armies of heaven, or hosts, depending on the um, translation. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you twinkling stars. Praise him, skies above. Praise him, vapors high above the clouds. Let every created thing give praise to the Lord. For he issued his command, and they came into being. He set them into place forever and ever. His decree will never be revoked. Mm. Praise the Lord from the earth, you creatures of the ocean depths. Fire and hail, snow and clouds, winds and weather that obey him, mountains and hills, fruit trees and all the cedars, wild animals and all livestock, catch may see our dogs, mm. small scurrying animals and birds, king of the heaven and all people, rulers and judges of all the earth, young men, young women, old men and children, let them all praise the name of the Lord, for his name is very great. His glory towers over the earth and heaven. He has made his people strong, honoring his faithful ones, the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. Amen. So that was from the Living Translation. Let's just, yeah, I'm blown away by this scripture. And I remember the first time I, I read it to Simon um, when the Lord put it on my heart. And, and I was like, every single thing that God has created is created to praise him. That's right. Amen. Amen. So let's just look a little further into that chapter. He started at the heavens. And it's funny enough, in the first verse of the Bible, it says, and God created the heavens and the earth. Mm. So he started with the heavens. You know, the angels, the armies of heaven, the sun, the moon, the stars, the vapors above the clouds. Then he gave a reason in verse five. For he issued his command and they came into being. He set them in place forever and his degree will never be revoked. That's a constant. That's a promise. They will always be there. Then in verse 7, we see the command change from the heavens to the earth. Creatures of the sea. Yeah. Which is a bit random because then he went into weather. How interesting. So creatures of the sea, the fire, fire, hail, snow, clouds, wind, and weather. Obey him. Oh, wow, that's All great. the elements. That's so good. Mm -hmm. And I'd just like to throw this in here, just saying, doesn't that just 
throw a huge, great big bomb into the theory of we came from fish. <laughs> because fish have to obey God and God created them for the sea. Okay, there are mammals that do a bit of both, but ultimately the sea creatures are the sea. Then, then he talks about mountains and hills, fruit trees and cedars, wild animals and all living stock or livestock, um, small scurrying animals, birds, or the kings of the earth, or people, or rulers, or judges, or young men, or old men, or women, and children, everybody, everything that is created to praise the Lord. So, okay, before we get into the reason why we must praise the Lord, let's just talk about how do mountains and trees and animals praise the Lord? By doing what they're created to do. Yeah. <coughs> mountains are mountains. They're created to be mountains. I could get political on here, but I think you know what I'm thinking. <laughs> but you know, the the trees, what do they do? What do fruit trees do? They produce fruit. That's their praise to God. That's how they praise God. Cedar trees stand tall. They praise God in their standing tall. So how are you praising God? Are you doing what you are created to do? Are you doing what you're supposed to do? You know, I could go into all the reason. And I just think this chapter is just amazing because it explains so much. To me, it, it's like we are created to praise in the way God has created us to be. It's like I'm a female white woman, but he's created me to praise like a female white woman. Oh. You're right. And it's not in what I do in a job wise. It's who I am. Yeah. So, does this mean then that every word that comes out of our mouth should be praise to God? Mm. Absolutely. Amen, sister. <laughs> Is that what we do? Is it what we do? When something annoys us, do we swear? I'm not looking at anybody in particular. Notice <laughs> I am focused down. But I, he's not the only one, is he? It is, I, 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 that's just one way that we are not worshipping and not praising. There is many ways. You see, praise here is not talking about the three songs or two songs in the beginning of a service. It's talking about a lifestyle. Praise and worship work hand in hand. And I'm going to go into that a bit more later. But they're both about a lifestyle. It's a... It's not a song, as we just heard. You know, we just sang that. It's not a song. It's not a song that you require. But it is a position of our hearts. Mm. And everything flows from the position of our hearts. In Proverbs 4.23, it says, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Mm. We already heard the verse this morning about what... What is in your heart will come out your mouth. So we have to be careful. You know what? I was thinking this morning when I was in the shower, actually, and God put this, you know, a mountain is a mountain. It is a mountain. It sits there and what happens? It does nothing. It's just there. So, and it's just, it praises the Lord in being a mountain. But you know what? The weather might knock it about, knock a few stones off it, 
may deform it. Things happen to that mountain, but it doesn't stop that mountain from praising God. Mm. Things happen to us as humans, and sometimes we've allowed it to stop us praising the God. So in verse 13 of this chapter, it says the reason why. It is, for his name is great. His glory towers over the earth and heaven. He has made his people strong. He has made you strong. Every single one of you. You might feel weak, but you are strong because he's made you strong. Even when, um, even when you don't feel it. Even when you don't feel it. Even when you don't feel strong, you are strong. Even when you don't feel like praising. And he honours his faithful ones and those who are close. Praise the Lord. There are a few things that stand out about this psalm that I just found very, very interesting. And um, this chapter is the middle of the the last five chapters of psalms. Now, obviously it is. (laughs) But they are commonly known, so Psalm 146, 47, 48, 49, and 50, are commonly known as the praise chapters. Every single one of them starts with praise the Lord. They're all very positive. You know, and then we've already heard this said, but Psalm 150, it talks about where you pray, how you praise, I mean, and how you praise. It talks about a different type of praise. It finishes with this. Sorry, Psalm 150, I'm going to read it again. I know we've already heard it this morning, but I am going to read it again. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise him. Praise his unequaled greatness. Praise him with a blast of a ram's horn. Praise him with a lyre and a harp. Praise him with a tambourine and the dancing. Praise him with string flutes. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with loud cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Do you have breath this morning? Well, you're all sitting up, so I presume every single one of you has breath this morning. Praise the Lord. There are no rules. This is saying that there are no rules about how you praise as long as you're praising him. Now, I've got to be honest with you, I am a stiff upper lip English girl, you know, and we're women and proper, right? So, praising him in dance is a bit out there for me. <laughs> I did when I was a kid, actually, <laughs> but it is. Now, let's just talk about praise. So this praise word in this, ver- in this chapter, it comes from the word hello. And when it says, the Lord, that comes from Yah. So let's just put that together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Means praise the Lord. So hallelujah. But don't we use that as like, oh, praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, it's like we do it to God. But actually, it's more of a command for you to do it. It's, hey, you, Steve. Hallelujah. So, hey, you, Steve. Praise the Lord. Oh. Hey, you, Pastor Simon. Praise the Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. You know, and it's not like a wishy-washy thing. It's praise the Lord. It's a commandment. That's really good. It's not for us to God. Isn't that revelationary? I thought, I was blown away when I realized that when I was writing this. So what does halal mean? I mean, we just said praise. So it also means to shine, to make a show, to boast, Mm -hmm. and thus be foolish to rave, to celebrate, to commend, to make foolishly, glory, to give glory, sorry, to give praise, renowned, and worship. So in other words, according to this, we are supposed to give reckless, foolish glory and worship to (laughs) someone. And this says the Lord. Come on. Okay. So, being the, you know, the quiet English 
rose that <laughs> you are <laughs> that is just not just prim and proper you know i don't know if i can do foolish in front of people but this says foolish yeah. look foolish there is a song that matt Reb Med sorry yeah, matt redmond wrote years and years ago and i remember and it was um i think it's called dancing generation and it was i will dance i will sing yeah. and and in it, it talk, there was like dancing foolishly. I will be foolish for my king. That was the line. I will be foolish for my king. And I remember when my kids were little and they loved this song. And we would walk to school. And I can remember Alice and she would deny this. I'm sure she would deny this. But she would sing the song and be clucking like a chicken all the way to school. I mean, she didn't care. Good. For her, it was, hey, I'm meant to look foolish, so I'm going to dance like a chicken, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and and it, it was, it's, it, cool. yeah, I, I'm sorry, but I really struggle with the foolish bit, looking foolish, but shouldn't that be what we like? Shouldn't that be like, what we like? If you need to kneel, kneel. If you need to lie prostate, lie prostate. If you need to stand up and jump up and shout glory to God and start dancing, well, that's it. go that's ahead, right. do it. That's it. It yeah. doesn't matter. Just praise the Lord. So the word halal in this chapter is interestingly used 12 times. In the Bible, 12 is mentioned 187 times and it signifies God's authority mm -hmm. and perfection, especially in the governmental rule. Wow. Okay, so let's think of some of the 12s, 12 disciples, 12 minor prophets. Jesus spoke in the temple when he was 12. The Old Testament tabernacle, now a tabernacle for anybody that doesn't know what a tabernacle is, pretty much like a mobile church or a mobile temple. Um, the priests were to place 12 unleavened cakes, 12 white plates, 12 bowls, 12 bulls, wow. 12 rams, 12 male lambs. Wow. There were 12 spies that scouted the promised land. In the, test, in the New Testament, there were 12 baskets left over after feeding the 5,000. Um, in Revelation, there were 12 gates. There were 12 angels, 12 foundations. There is a whole lot more. Okay, a whole lot more. And um, we use it heaps even in today's time. There were 12 months of, of the year, 12 hours of the day, 12 hours of night, 12 or a dozen eggs, <laughs> 12 inches makes a foot. And do you know what? Most humans have 12 ribs. So I don't believe when this is saying, praise the Lord and praise him 12 times, it's insignificant. So remembering it means God's authority and perfect government. I see this as a rule of God's authority yeah. on us. It's a rule for us to praise him. <laughs> Wherever we are, whatever mindset we're in, whatever we're doing, we are to do what we are created to do. Praise him. Yeah. Because God's authority is over us. We have to praise him. Now, one significant 12 I have missed out. Um, anybody? This is a quiz. Twelve tribes of Israel. Well done. <laughs> Top of the class. Oh, my bracelet fell off. Okay. So, I left this out on purpose because I want to look at this a little bit more. Because one of those tribes is the tribe of Judah. Mm. So, just stay with me. I am going somewhere with this. The first time we see the word praise <coughs> is in Genesis 29. When Leah, the first wife of Jacob, uses it. Now, Leah named her, she had a few sons. And um, she named the first four sons after the mood she was in. That's a really good job I don't do that with my son. Because I was not in a good mood. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> so, the first son was called Reuben. Now, do you know the story of Leah? Yeah. Leah was 
given to Jacob, but Jacob was in love with her sister and he had to work seven years to marry his Rachel and he was tricked into marrying Leah. So he didn't really love Leah. He loved Rachel. And we all know he got Rachel in the end as well, but that's another story for another time. So his, her first son was called Reuben. And she named him Reuben because she hoped that because she had produced a son, Jacob would love her now. So it simply means, behold, a son. So he's saying, he's saying to you, look, I've given you a son, Jacob. Now you've got to love me. Her second son was Simeon. Now, this means to be heard. And she said, oh, she said it's because she felt the Lord had heard her. So, hey, the Lord's heard me. He's given me two sons. Now you're going to love me, Jacob. The third son was called Levi, and um, Levi, she had three sons. Surely, surely, this means we're going to be unified, me and Jacob. We're going to be unified. He's going to love me. He's going, we're going to be joined as one, and Levi means joined or unified. So, then let's just look up chapter 29 of Genesis and verse 34. She says, I'm sorry, chapter 29 verse 34, is that what I said? That's what I said. Okay, good. So she conceived again and bore a son and said, this time I will praise the Lord. Yeah. Mm. Therefore she called him Judah. Come on. And then she ceased bearing. Yeah. Okay. So just like all the other boys, this boy's had meaning. And it meant praise and give thanks. So she stopped relying on her husband for validation and started relying on God. Yeah. And she was grateful for, for Judah. So you're looking at all the tribes of Israel and you think of their names. So, for instance, um, Levites, they, Levites, they were all the priests. Mm. Right, that's right, isn't it? They were all yep. the priests. Yep. yep. And it means unified or joined to God. And Judah means praise. So they were the worship team of the tribes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. In Isaiah 43, 21, it says, the people I have formed for myself, they will declare my praise. So if you don't need, if you needed some other reason or some, uh, some other um, validation of God created his people for praise, it's, also, it's all the way through the Bible. Mm. It's just one more verse. God has ordained us to praise him. Mm. And we often put praise and worship together, don't we? We talk about praise being a fast song and worship being a slow song. That's not what it means, people. <laughs> no, that's right. That's it's right. definitely not what it means. But they do go hand in hand. We got that bit right. They do go hand in hand. And singing and doing worship songs and praise songs and every other song. It is part of our praise and worship, but it's just a small part of it. So when our English translations of the Bible were written, they used the word worship. Um, translating the Hebrew word, and I'm not sure how to pronounce this because I am not ancient anything so shakar uh, i think that's how you pronounce it but that means a very basic form of worship okay so it means basically to bow down to lay prostrate to surrender yourself to something and we know it's to god okay 
is to lay down your life. That's basically what worship means. It's that in in that word. And you know what? In stages of the Israelite story throughout the whole Bible and even I'd say the Jewish community now, they worshipped calves, golden statues, worshipped all sorts of other things. Now there are a few other words for worship and praise, and one of them is um, barak. It uh, which it actually means reverence. It means literally kneeling down before. It's a sign of submission. It also means to bless and adore. So when Psalms 103 verse 1, it's a, this is a perfect example of David giving Barak for the Lord. And it's obviously when he penned those words. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. That is Barak. Another word is Tuda. Now, that sounds a bit familiar because we've talked about something similar to this. And it's taken from the Hebrew word Yada, which is what Judah comes from. <laughs> and that means praise and thanksgiving. It's described as an offering to God or an, another act of adoration. And yes, singing, joyful praise, you know, it, it, that's part of that act. And then another word is zema. And it literally means to make music. And that is what Psalm 150 is all about. And then the last word is, as we know, we've been talking about halal. And this is why we put praise and worship together. They do go hand in hand. Okay, so they all work. So, if we are correct, created to praise and alive to worship, if we are not praising and worshipping God, our deeps and depths, part of us has to worship and praise something else. Mm. So you think of all the religious, all the different religions in the world. If they're not praising and worshiping Yahweh, they found something else to praise and worship. Yeah, sure. Atheists, what do they praise and worship? Themselves. Themselves. Yeah. You have to. It's part of our DNA. Mm -hmm. We have to praise and worship, and so we will find something. Yeah. It could be that so people, loved ones. You know, but for us who know that we praise and worship Yahweh, I want to ask you today: Are you are you putting anything above God? Are you praise and worshiping something else? Now, I love my husband, and I love him to bits, and I have admiration for him. I would say I adore him, but if he came above God, and he would tell me off that himself, but if he came above God in my life, that's an issue. Yeah, that's right. That's true. Amen. And the same with the other way around. Yeah. I don't want him to try and please me. I want him to please God. Yeah. Amen. I don't want yeah. to please him. I do want to please him, but get me wrong. <laughs> but I want to please God first. And because I've pleased God first, mm -hmm. the rest will fall into place. The hierarchy is God. Yeah. And then everything else flows out of that. This is one reason why I'm really wary on this self-love teaching. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I mean, yes, let's just make this clear. It does say love your neighbours as yourself. Right. I think that's the only verse though. Mm. There are plenty of other verses that say, sorry guys, I am sorry, and you might want to kick me later, but it says put other people before you. That's, that's right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Put God before you. That's right. You know, it hurts people when you say that, but God's got to be first, yeah. and everything else does flow from that. That's right. 
if God is the center of your life, if God is in your heart, that's what's going to flow out of it. Not other things. So are you living a life of praise and worship? Oh, you, you should be doing it with every breath. Now, Yahweh, I'm, I, I'm sure you've all seen this, but Yahweh is about Y-H originally, W-H. There's no vowels in there. We put the vowels in because I think we're English and we just like to make things more complicated. Mm -hmm. But Yahweh. Now, do you know what? When God breathed in us, mm -hmm. Yahweh is the noise that we make for breathing. When you breathe in, Yah, and when you breathe out, Way. That's the sound of breathing. And so every atheist is actually breathing mm -hmm. and saying Yahweh, <laughs> even if they don't know it. <laughs> and you can, you can find that out. That is true, I yeah, promise yeah. you. You can, you can go and look at it. Um, it is true. It's so interesting. Isn't that worship? Yeah, Isn't that yeah. praise? That's every breath is designed to praise God. Come on. So if I ask you this morning, have you praised God with every word that you have spoken this week? Okay, that's a bit of a tall order. <laughs> How about, have you praised God with every word or breath in the last 24 hours? Okay, let's bring that down again. <laughs> <laughs> have you praised God with every breath in the last two hours? Now, we've been in church for the last two hours, but I wonder how many of you have wandered off and started thinking about other things. Oh, I've got to put that on my shopping list. Oh, I must remember to do that. Oh, I haven't texted so-and-so back. Oh, sorry, I should be worshipping. I should be praising. Come on, preach. I should be worshipping. Yeah, it's so true. But we do it, don't we? We get so easily distracted. Someone said to me a few weeks ago that I had SOS, and when I looked very confused, they said shiny object syndrome. <laughs> I am so distracted by shiny objects. All of a sudden, it's like, oh, look at that. I, you know, sometimes I could be like um, that little fish in Dory, the dory mm. you know. But keep on swimming, keep on swimming. I have to keep saying it to myself. Keep on praising, keep on praising, keep on praising. <laughs> Otherwise... I'll probably forget, and two minutes later, I'm off doing something else. <laughs> you think I'm joking? <laughs> That's not a joke. <laughs> Does this make sense to you? Oh, yeah. yeah. So when we worship God Almighty, Yahweh, we bow before him. We surrender our wants. We surrender our needs. We trust him. And we don't trust us. That's a scary thought. We give it all to him. We give back the authority. And we say, hey, God, you're, you're in charge. I'm not. This is part of our praise. We are supposed to be a living sacrifice. In Romans 12, verse 1, it says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living, holy sacrifice. That's good. Okay, that's not just living, it's a holy one too. Yeah, sure. The kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. That's living translation as well. What a wonderful way. Um, in the New King James Version, it puts it as this is your reasonable service him it doesn't feel reasonable to hand over everything to be a living sacrifice now living sacrifice that sounds painful to me it's supposed to be painful sometimes sometimes it's really 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 painful and i'm sure you know when you see the pictures of the altar and you see a lamb on it they've tied it up i'm sure it's dead but they've tied it up anyway but just imagine that for us. I'm sure it must symbolize that sometimes you have to be strapped to that altar and be a living sacrifice. Yeah, because I know yeah. for me, I probably want to get up and move because it will be too painful, be too hot. <laughs> Praise and worship has authority. It changes the atmosphere. When you start declaring praise, when you bow down in worship, 
you start allowing God's authority to rule in every situation in your life. Oops. That's crazy. Right? It's giving his authority back to him. Even when we don't even when we don't feel it. Oh, you're crazy. In fact, even when, when you don't feel it, praise him more. Yeah. When you're up to the, your neck in business, praise him. When you think it's all over, praise him more. Mm. When you're feeling sad, praise him more. When you're feeling depressed, praise him more. When you're feeling happy, praise him more. When you're feeling like you just can't do it, praise him more. He will change the atmosphere. When you pull up your, put up your walls, praise him more. We all pull up our walls. We've all been hurt. We all put up walls. But going back to the tribes of, the tribes of Israel, when you put up those walls, and it said in that song that, that I don't know if you could, they did have words in that song we played this morning, in, in the original, I don't quite know what happened to the words, but um, it says, praise him, the sound of praise made the Jericho walls fall down. Yeah. When you put walls up, praise him. You know, Judah went first, went ahead. They sent the worship team first, I think that's a bit mean, but it's because there's power in praise. That's it. There's authority in praise. So the first seven times around Jericho, they were quiet. But when they made a praise sound, when they bang the trumpets, um, bang the drums and blow the trumpets even, you know, whatever the noise they made, those walls fell down. Praise him when your walls are up. Praise him more, praise him more. You are created to praise. And you're alive to worship. We're alive to bow down and offer ourselves as a living sacrifice. And we're supposed to do it all the time, continuously. In Romans 13, 15, it says, Do Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a, a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of our lips that openly profess his name sacrifice of praise sometimes it feels like a sacrifice doesn't it to praise I don't always want to listen to to Christian music and I you know you know I've just talked about that that's not necessarily praise but that's part of praising but sometimes when you put on that Christian music and you don't feel like it it changes your focus mm -hmm. it changes your attitude it is a sacrifice when we don't feel it, especially when we've lost hope. Praise, 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 praise. That is what you're created to do, is to praise. I'm not talking about your jobs. I'm not saying, right, I have to quit my job and I have to start praising God and have my hands up in the air. That's not what it is. It's not about your job. It's about who you are. 1 Corinthians 13, 11 onwards, it talks about, I'm not going to read it, but you can read it later. Um, it talks about um, what we do goes, will go in through the judgment and it will be tested by fire. Mm -hmm. It's not a salvation issue, it's what we do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you're created to be an intercessor, if you're created to be a prophet, if you're created to be or one of these things, if it's gone through the fire, have you been doing what you are created to do? Mm -hmm. Are you doing it? Because it could be burnt up like wood. But you know, if you're an intercessor and you're intercessing, that's gold. That only gets shinier with fire and with heat. Shinier. So I'm just going to leave on this point, really. Now, I just pray that this morning is an anchor point in your life, that I have spoken an anchor point in your life, where it's today that you say, gosh, I am changing my attitude because I am created to continually live a life of praise, worshiping Yahweh.
appeared first. I will surrender. I will do it. I will do that today. I just pray that for you, that this is an anchor point. It's at this point that you will see, not because of anything I've said, not because of me, but because you are have the revelation of the obedience in praise and worship in your life, in every situation. I think we're going to play a song, so we will be cutting this out of, but we'll put the link underneath. And so we got this song, we started with this song, and we're going to finish with this song. And hopefully we'll hear the words a bit better, because <laughs> it's such a good song. Everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Thank you. Yeah,